You better just surrender cause I stand my ground You better just surrender cause I stand my ground You better just surrender cause I stand my ground You better just surrender cause I stand my ground Uh, so Aaron, you're probably the biggest Battlefield fan that I know, anyway. Um, and I haven't played a whole I'll lot of the it. series. You'll take it. <laughs> yeah. um, I haven't played a whole lot of the series because I don't really care about multiplayer so much. Um, but I got a chance to check out the upcoming Battlefield Hardline, which is, it kind of goes away from the military aspect that Battlefield's known for, and it kind of sets up this, this crime drama. And playing the first mission of the single player campaign, I noticed that they were emphasizing story a whole lot more, and that kind of drew me in. But I'm curious, from your perspective, was that a good thing or was that a bad thing? I mean, like relative to older sing single player campaigns, like how did you feel about this from the get go? Yeah, I mean, I got the impression that Dice brought in Visceral on this one in the first place because of their ability to tell a good story. Um, over the years, Battlefield has trended towards the trying to be Call of Duty single player campaign. It just hasn't worked for that series because you know everybody who plays that game. They enjoy multiplayer sandbox aspects of it, and they need to translate those to single player. So it seems like what Visceral has done is they've done a much better job of, you know, here are your tools. Like you have a you have a grappling hook, you have a zip line, you have a taser, and just sort of letting you go in there. In they their also have like little bottle caps you can throw. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stealth to the single player campaign, which uh, I think there are a lot of like multiple like routes you could take. Like the first mission, you know, they kind of give you this slow plotting like setup, which I really enjoyed. But then you get into the mission, and yeah, you're trying to like sneak around the sort of back alleys of Miami, uh, and you have to distract guys by like throwing things, or you can sneak up on them and tase them. But like, I did kind of enjoy that that freedom that you got because in the past, for me anyway, playing the Battlefield campaign, very specific regimented actions had to be taken, and then if you didn't do that, the fail state basically would kick in and you had to start over. And it was interesting because uh, while we were doing the demo, in one instance there was a stealth section, and and I pulled out the zip line. I was like, "Hey, can I use this here?" And the dev looked at me and said, "I don't know. Yeah. Let's try it." Right. And to me, that's that that shows that you're creating more of a sandbox environment than just a like, "Here's exactly what you have to do, or you fail" kind of environment. Yeah. And th that being said, there are definitely um, points that you have to hit in each level, and a lot of them were linear that we saw anyway. So. You have a certain amount of freedom within those environments, but it is still a single player campaign. It's not like, you know, here's a field no, or a right. city or like. Yeah, it's not totally wide open, but it definitely seemed like the linear focus was definitely on the storytelling aspect, which again, I thought like, because in the past, like I had a hard time identifying with who I was as the lead character. I mean, here you get to meet the characters before you control them. And and it, it's a great little duo that we've got. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of some of the, you know, the friends or the, you know, the co-workers from um, The Wire, the HBO yeah. show, like, had that same vibe where they're sort of these, these cops have a bit of an attitude and, you know, these certain personalities that contrast, but they still know how to work together. Um, and I, th I thought that that was a great effort to sort of give the player something more to care about. So another thing that Visceral did, which I thought was kind of cool, was they actually worked the environment and the shooting mechanics together. So for example, there was a scene where you walk into a school and it's kind of a stealth section, although you can sort of do it how you want. Yeah. So there's a downstairs and an upstairs. If you go loud in the downstairs, the upstairs is still not alerted. And in most games would just be like, most games would just be like, hey, that's just because it's a game. But in this case, they actually had really loud music playing. Like it was sort of like, right. they were like gangbangers and they had like really loud music going. So Visceral in, set in the player's mind that, you know, if you have a loud gunfight downstairs and there's loud music going on upstairs, they don't hear you. Yeah. So it was cool. It wasn't just like, hey, it's a game. They're not alerted. It was, they're not alerted because they were listening to loud music upstairs. Yeah, I, that was definitely a good effort on their part. And it does sort of add to your sense of immersion a little bit. Uh, the one actual issue I had with the stealth system, you know, related to the environment, was uh, in that same school section, like out front, I think there was a guy that I incapacitated, and there was like a, a some desk or something nearby where I could have, you know, put him under. And I was asking the devs, like, "Oh, can I move the body?" And they said, "No, we don't want to go that far into the stealth element," which to me seemed like a little bit of a cop out, if I'm honest, because again, they are thinking ahead and doing this music thing, you know. The stealth aspect of sneaking is one thing, but I think it would be so much stronger, and it wouldn't confuse players if you could move bodies, so that yeah. once you incapacitate someone, it supports the, the simpler stealth mechanics that are there. Uh, I don't imagine they're going to change that between now and release. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting mix of stealth. It's not perfect, I don't think. Um, Seems like they're trying to find a good balance between, you know, your classic Battlefield fans who are just going to want to pick up a gun and blow their way through levels, yeah. and people who want a more in-depth experience. Yeah. Um, they have that, they have like the Far Cry basically phone tagging system in it. Right. Which I think some people will enjoy just because of the mechanic itself, but I think other people will find a little bit gamey for the story. Yeah. You know, it's like this down-to-earth gritty cop drama, and then all of a sudden you pull out your bat phone. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing happened in Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. You know, it's sort of, it's this, it removes you from whatever sort of, you know, realistic immersion you might be experiencing. But, you know, again, I, it, it's supposed to be fun, right? Yeah. So what was your overall impression, sort of takeaway from the single-player demo? Well, we, again, we played the intro mission, and I enjoyed that quite a bit because, it, again, it focused on story and character, and I think that that is something for a single-player campaign that is a good motivator to, to keep you interested and to keep you, you know, motivated to, to play with these characters and get through their story. Um, the ninth mission, you know, that we, that we played was very much uh, action-oriented, which was good, and, like, I'll be honest, I'm not that great at those sequences. Like, I screwed up yeah. <laughs> pretty badly during that demo. Um, so I think I need to I need to know a little bit more about how your tool set progresses because we went from a really simple loadout to basically having like the entire weapon closet like open mm -hmm. for us to choose from. So. And I found that people who had played the beta will be familiar with all like the weapons from the multiplayer campaign. So for example, you know, there's a section where they come at you and it's dark and you have to basically run into your weapon locker and switch out for night scopes and trip mines. So so it's interesting there's definitely that crossover between single player and multiplayer that I think will help people in both directions. Now, one interesting thing was I talked to the devs um, after the demo was over, just a little informally, and they are taking a lot of community feedback, which I appreciate. I think that's one of the reasons why this game was delayed. Um, they were talking asymmetric warfare. It's been a big um, issue on Reddit where people were like, hey, this is a cop drama. Why do cops have, you know, robber guns? And why do robbers have cop guns? So I'll be interested to see what they actually end up doing with that because they are taking that feedback right now. So we're gonna see basically what changes they've come up with um, from their original delayed date yeah. to March 17th. And I'm, I'm actually very curious as a Battlefield fan to play a, like a more thematic Battlefield. Yeah, this might be the first Battlefield game in forever <laughs> that holds my interest so yeah i mean we'll see maybe we'll do another beta who knows hopefully hope so visceral <laughs> no fire, no fire, right?